Okay, so um, soft tissue preservation. This is a, a story that actually started uh, in the late 1970s at the British Museum of Natural History, uh, where they found soft, there's one uh, mention of it in a paper, a soft tissue being found in one of the fossil fishes, um, a bony fish by Bartram. And he just mentions but in two lines, we found lots of soft tissue in this fossil. And then nothing else happens in the research of soft tissue uh, from the go go fish until the late 90s when Karina Marshall found a small patch of um, fibres here. Um, and this is a, a nerve running through it. And we all got very excited about this, rushed it off to nature, got our first rejection in about five minutes. Um, because basically we were told soft tissue doesn't preserve in fishes from the Devonian at 375 million years old. It's a mistake. So then we started on a fairly long uh, quest to actually prove uh, to the scientific community, particularly other vertebrate paleontologists, that we did in fact have soft tissue preservation. And it wasn't until 2007 that our first paper um, came out uh, recognising that we did have soft tissue preservation at GoGo. -Go. And we actually have a lot of soft tissue preservation. It's fairly unique in that it's three-dimensionally preserved uh, and the muscle tissue and fibres are also three-dimensionally preserved. And um, we have them in uh, the bony fish, um, in some of our, our sharks, most common in the placoderms or the armoured fish. And these, um, with the exception of this one and this one, have all been asset prepared. Um, in some instances, our soft tissue is actually so extensive that we're finding it very difficult to actually identify the animal underneath the soft tissue. Uh, <laughs> so um, that's why this one's the go-go query shark. Um, this is a kind of eye head region. We have a, a mouth sitting in here. And this is just all muscle tissue, uh, pretty much from the back of the head back. Uh, you can see that there's skin preserved here. That's the lateral line along the um, skin. And you can see all of the muscle fibers um, sitting there um, nicely orientated. So we've been able to do a fantastic muscle map of this, this creature, but we're still not quite sure if it's a shark or an acanthodium. We've done most of our work on the, the placoderms um, and these are armored fish, they're a fully extinct group and they've got this wonderful kind of neck joint here and they can basically flip their head up and down. And it was always predicted that there was a very large uh, mass of muscles just kind of sitting here that helps um, actually open up this um, neck joint. What we found though was with the muscle preservation that we had the, the uh, levator capitis here, which had been predicted, but we had a second set of muscles um, sitting here, and you can see them there, which were never predicted. So we had a lot more complexity in the um, musculature than anyone had ever thought. Uh, this is the cucularis muscle um, sitting here, and in humans, that's a trapezius. So this is the oldest evidence of that this muscle is actually a, a jawed vertebrate muscle. Um, and in modern fish, it's a fin elevator. And it's always been considered uh, that that was its primitive um, or ancestral condition. But what we found in our, our placoderm is that it doesn't actually go anywhere near the fin and it is um, completely confined as a neck muscle. Uh, the other thing we got was these wonderful um, 
muscles in the abdominal region and you can see that there's these kind of nice longitudinal muscles which are predicted uh, but then there was these transverse musculature uh, which has been reconstructed sitting along down here and again this musculature had never been predicted the first extant animals that you actually see these in are amphibians so what we're starting to see with our, our placoderms the first jawed vertebrates is um, a great deal of mus musculature complexity which had not been predicted and so our extant um, fishes and, and sharks appear to have simplified their musculature through evolution rather than uh, tetrapods um, having uh, complex, um, developed more complex musculature. As I said, a lot of the work that we had been doing was um, acid preparation and unfortunately that does have the tendency <coughs> to dissolve away the muscles, which is not really what we want. Um, so in the, around about 2008, we started using synchrotron technology where we keep the fish in the nodule. Um, we get these kind of um, slices. Uh, the musculature that is, is here. Uh, this is the eye capsule um, sitting in there. And then when we reconstruct them, we can actually reconstruct, um, <coughs> this is some of the muscle that, um, orbital muscles that orientated the, the eyeball. So we're starting to get a very good picture of um, the soft anatomy of these animals. Um, again, uh, through um, asset preparation, any kind of muscle um, that's sitting around the jaw area is dissolved away really quickly and easily. But synchrotron shows that we've got actually quite large amounts of the, the jaw muscle preserved still. Um, so the question then was how did we get um, this musculature preserved? And it's right across, so we get it in the um, invertebrates as well. Uh, Derek Briggs um, suggested that it was bacterially mediated. And I actually did quite a lot of work with Cleedy and a PhD student in us who um, we actually did discover through some biomarkers and also SEMs. Uh, you've got a bit of biofilm here. Uh, there are your muscle fibers. Um, here's the gut actually preserved here. But it's actually bacteria that's assisting in the muscle preservation, mainly by providing a, um, a biofilm over the top, which keeps it all together, and it's also a site of phosphate reduction, uh, which is also allowing for the preservation. We also have got some preservation of organs. Uh, so here we kind of have um, the sulfury kind of red bit which kind of sat in here is actually a liver preserved and again some work that Cleedy did showed that the sulfur isotopes that came out of this are in fact organic sulfur so they came from the from the animal so um, we've got some pretty exceptional preservation of muscle tissue happening up in the the go-go and um, Tomographic, particularly synchrotron, is helping us to get a much better idea of the preservation and the isotope work that we've been doing with Cleedy is giving us an idea of how that preservation actually occurs. Thank you.